It was your first mistake. Oh, was your, inviting you was my first mistake? Exactly. I agree. Hi, everybody. I'm Kara Tier. Welcome back to episode two of Common Sense Scuba. As you can see from our opening sequence, we've already made some improvements to this little YouTube channel with a new logo, hopefully a better background, some better lighting, better camera. Better um, guests. Better guests. So it's not hard to be better when you're the first. And without further ado, I would like to introduce my good friend, David Sonny Sundberg. He's a fellow IDC staff instructor, tech diver, newly minted tech instructor, rebreather diver, uh, and all around stand up guy. Um, so today we are here to talk to you about a pretty common sense topic, but I think it's one that I get pretty often in the dive shop, don't you? Uh, sometimes. Hey, what, uh, what weights do I buy? So, you know, might anybody that's been around the diving community a long time doesn't really tend to think about that, but to new divers coming into the community, especially when that first really exciting moment of time to buy your own scuba gear, um, the topic of conversation comes up about dive weights. So we're here to have a conversation about different types of weights and some weight etiquette and what you can do with these weights and kind of how to keep it down, as it were. So without further ado, Sonny, why don't you go ahead and take it away? So one of the things I get asked all the time is, do I need to buy my own weights? Well, for those who are decide they're gonna be traveling divers, I would honestly answer no. I've been to most dive sites throughout the world, uh, ranging from Europe to Korea, Australia, even throughout the United States, and almost every single dive operation has some kind of waiting scenario for divers. So if you are a traveling diver and you're worried about, oh, is this five pounds gonna put me over my weight limit? Don't worry about that at all. Worry about getting your regulator, your computer, your actual personal equipment on side your uh, dive or on, on your carry-on versus extra pounds of lead. Uh, the next thing I get asked is whether I wanna use soft weights or hard weights. For me, that's more of where you're gonna place the weight. If I'm gonna put it inside my side weight pouches or my that on my bcd i'll generally go with the hard weights simply because they're cheaper if it's going to be something that's going to be close against my spine or a part of my body i'll go with one of these softer weights simply because it conforms better to my body uh, i personally dive the hollis katana 2 and even though it's got a nice spine pocket for uh dive weights just like the x deep does I still prefer soft weights in there simply because they're more malleable against my spine. So if I'm doing like some uh, confined water diving, such as wreck or cave, I'm able to move my body a little bit more not having to worry about the weights impacting my range of motion. If I'm just putting them in my side pockets on my recreational BC, I'll go with these harder weights just because once again, they're a little bit cheaper and I don't have to worry so much if they're just in my dumb pockets. No, Sonny, I think you bring up some really, really good points. Like everything before, and in video one, I mentioned everybody is an expert. Um, and here I am, and you know, an, an expert in, in nothing. I hate to say that the prevailing answer, really, for most things in the dive community, here, it depends, right? It, so, exactly. So what's the scenario and what's the situation? I've had people ask, even, do I need to buy a tank and put that in my check baggage to fly on vacation? And so yes. for holiday divers, yeah, I don't. I've although I've seen some folks do that successfully. That's a whole other story. Um, but for holiday divers. And, and even local divers, a lot of the dive boats that we dive around here in the Gulf are, have weights on board. There's mm -hmm. really no need, no need to bring that. But really, what I like to tell people is when you cross over to that point where you and your dive buddy are going to go do a shore dive or go to a site like we have a lot of springs in this area, mm -hmm. you're disgusting. I totally can. Um, you know, that's really probably the time that you need to go ahead and purchase those weights. But as far as the actual weights themselves go, there's not really... Physically, a lot of difference, right? Five pounds. Five pounds is, is five, five pounds. pounds. It goes back to the whole joke, like, which weighs more, a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? Um, slight cost difference. So about $3 a pound, typically for lead weight at most normal retail price. Your soft weights run anywhere from 4, four to five. $6 a pound, depending on where you're getting them. So for the most part, they seem to be the same. I know that I personally, when I went out the first time and bought my set of weights, was super, hey, I want the nice stuff, right? And if it's more expensive, it's got to be nice. Um, and I bought a bunch of, a bunch of soft weights. But what I found... 
uh, as I continue diving and as I change styles and I move from recreational diving to some of the more technical diving is that just as Sunny said, the placement matters. And in some situations, um, it's beneficial to be able to place those weights with different attachment points. So I dive a Razor Side Mount 2.5 harness, um, which, okay. has, we'll forgive you. <laughs> which has some uh, ability to put in weight pockets into the wing itself, but you can also use little Velcro mechanisms to put them into the webbing of the back of the weight. And in the same way, um, that Sunny's BCD has as well. Um, I have a weight pockets. Weight pockets. Thank you. That you can put the soft weights into. But where I found it really, it pays. Again, it depends what you're doing. And sometimes uh, it's nice to have a diversity of different weights. Is when you need to use a weight in a diving scenario that's not necessarily uh, for weighting yourself when you dive. So just the other day, we were out there on a dive boat that didn't have a functioning depth uh, transducer at the time oh, so are you, are you talking about when we dropped a uh weight and a computer down i am talking about when we dropped a weight and a computer down we had to uh send a dive computer in gauge mode down to the bottom so we could figure out how deep the dive site was so one of the things that we were able to do with that is simply attach a weight onto a spool or a reel and be able to send that down to the bottom with the dive computer attached to it much much easier proposition to put it through something that has a natural hard point that way than trying to find a way to wrap this up or somehow attach that uh it's not going to work so well and you're probably going to be in a lost weight exactly because so. and i think we've all heard about like oh i dropped a weight packet here and there and as a dive professional there's been many a time i've had to chase student dive uh pocket or dive weight pockets but Every single dive has its own little characteristics, as you said, Kara. So I, what works for me doesn't necessarily work for every single person. So it goes back to the, it depends. And by no means am I an expert in all things diving. Anyone who says they're an expert in all things diving, please run away right away because they have no idea what they're talking about. I've been diving for about 12 years and every day I'm learning something new from someone else. So what works for me in one scenario might not work for you in another scenario. So take everything we're saying with a grain of salt. But other than that, I think that about covers um, some of the basics of weight. What we didn't talk about was weighting, and I think that that's a whole separate that subject. That is a whole different that subject. That we will definitely get into in a follow-on video. So if you enjoyed what you saw here today, I'd really appreciate you subscribing to our channel. Um, pop down into the comments and let us know what the next subject that you would like to tackle, like us to tackle on Common Sense Scuba. And please follow us on Instagram at Twinset Diving, or you can shoot us an email at twinsetdiving at gmail.com. Sunny also is on Instagram. You can follow him at sunny underscore diver. Uh, and we look forward to answering any questions that you might have down below in the comments. So thanks for coming out today, Sunny. I really appreciate it. No problem. I get a drink. Yay! I can't believe you burped in the middle of the video.